What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Other Reacted to another episode of 25 of Fringer and Beyond a Journey's End. Um, what happened in the last episode? That was a great question. Let me just, a uh, boom, um, get the last episode up. <clears throat> so, what happened last episode? That's a great question. Last episode, we were pretty much just going through the King's Tomb, um, and getting jumped by ourselves over and over and over, which is, you know, great, which is a great situation. Um, we kind of, we went through literally, like, what, four different, like, groups kind of doing their thing. So we had, like, Ubel versus Ubel, plus land as the, for the assist. U Real Ubel wins those. Um, then we had the, this group of three with, what, what's her name, like, Erre? No, it's, it's not Erre, it's the other one. She freaking, I don't need to remember her name, because she freaking got rolled in smoke. The hypnotism wizard, right? Um, because there was kind of the idea of, oh, maybe we can hypnotize the rocks, or the rocks, the clones, but, you know, that didn't work out for her that well, because they're immune to that, LMAO. Um, she really got naturally countered. Dude, that's the issue, bro. All these tests, if you're a one-trick pony mage, you're gonna get countered. Like, we're doing a bunch of different tests. Who are you gonna hypnotize? And I guess being in a group can kind of, like, get you past that a bit, like, alleviate that, but, yeah. Man, I wish I had one of these escape golems that I could just, you know what I'm saying? Imagine just getting carried away by a giant buff rock dude. That's clutch. But yeah, so they lost to Sense. Um, then we had the the our group of three um, that were fighting themselves. That I think they ended up winning this pretty... Or I guess, no, they didn't win it yet. But they they were on the upswing because they had taken out Clone Ere. Or at least damaged her. So this situation seems to be in a kind of a flux spot instead of just being at a standstill. Which is funny, it's different. I think, honestly, like, one thing, the Ubel fight was, like, as long as it was Ubel v. Ubel, it was, like, they were almost doing the same thing for half of it, which was kind of interesting, right? But then eventually it kind of diverged. But, like, look, they're, they're literally mimicking each other's movements. But as soon as we start adding in, like, 3v3, then it spins, it, like, they're not really doing the same thing, right? They're doing similar things, but they're not, like, mirroring each other, right? They're firing in different intervals, the other Erre is up on the roof. There's all sorts of stuff going on. So I wonder, like, if certain people are naturally, like, more complicated. Because, like, I'm trying to apply it to the free run fight, which we're about to go into, right? And so the question is, like, how, you know, can normal free run and clone free run, like, how likely are they to just, like, match each other? Which then would allow someone else, like, Fern to come in and, like, win, right? Because, like, with how complicated... Like, free run has, like, a billion spells in her repertoire. So, like... Dude, the clone could pick, like, a million different spells to choose from. How are you supposed to match that, right? As opposed to Ubel, who, like, all you have to do is, like, she's going to do Spear Swing. That's just her move, right? Or, like, Erre is gonna do Rock Control. That's just her move. But Freerun could do literally, like, so many different things. So, make, like, trying to predict that could be pretty insane. Um... To the point that just throwing another free run at her, like the real free run at her, might not like be as con conclusive of, conclusive as I might have thought. Which is kind of what I was talking about last episode, where it's like, bro, just walk in with the whole team. I still think the walk in with the whole team strat could be pretty reasonable, but um, it really depends. Freer knows herself the best, so I don't mind. You know what I mean? Like if she if she has reservations and I'd like to hear them out, I just like to hear them, bro. I just like to hear them. But we're about to talk strategy. We're about to talk shop. Um, that's literally where the episode ended. So. Without further ado, I say let's just jump into it. Episode 25. Bring. Bring. Of. Free run. Um, oh, this is actually a nice aerial shot that we're opening on. It looks like we got Sense in the corner, Richter up there, and then the group of five right here. So we got seven of us. 7v1 is pretty crazy. Unless, like I was saying last episode, the um, Fern is also in there. That could be pretty funny. So then it becomes a 7v2. But it's like, bro, even like... Even if, like, some of these people suck, which isn't even true, but, like, Sense is a freaking first-class wizard, so surely she could make some moves if she was thrown in in the uh, formula here. But let's just see what actually happens instead of um, yapping about what might. Episode 25, let's get going in. A three, a two, a one, and I. Timer. Timer right here. Pip in the description. Like the video, you know how it goes. Okay, bet. Let's focus. Turn it up. My little free run. Fern like, oh, murdering free run? I got some plans. I've been thinking about it recently. She slept in one too many times. I got some plays. She 
She's way too polite with suggesting that, though. <laughs> yeah? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Little, little flashback. Have you... What does that mean? Have you thought about killing a, a really OP elf before, Furin? Are you kind of, like, kindred spiriting a little bit? Or, like, you know what I mean? What's going on there? Or is that referring to, like, a specific line of dialogue that she was saying in that scene? Because I don't remember... You know what I mean? I don't remember what dialogue Flame was saying in that. Or not Flame, wait. Uh, Zede was saying in that scene. If that... Yeah. What, what was she yapping about? What, what was Blood yapping about? I just messed up that a lot. Man, remember when Stark was in the show? <laughs> remember when Stark was in the show? That was crazy. It faintly smelled like a sunny day. Do sunny days even smell? I feel like sunny days don't really smell. Like a rainy rain smells. Rain got a real specific smell to it. You know what I'm saying? But like... I guess they kind of can. I don't know. Weather do be kind of smelly sometimes. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not a freaking weatherologist. Okay. It's crazy. And we see here in one of the, the scenes, the um, free, free, run, right here, right here. That, that one, that one, that one. That was um, free run and fur and getting ready to fight clone free run. It's been in front of us the entire time. Isn't that crazy? Okay, can my hair like lock in a second? A fatal vulnerability. All right, what's your vulnerability, Freerun? Explain it. Bro's bloodied. Who is this random guy that just showed up? Wait, who is it? <laughs> I made it. <laughs> I made it. Yeah, you made it. Doomsday. Bro is bloodied. He's been pierced. Oh, Ed L, that was the hypnotist name. It tagged you though. Are you talking about sense still? Sense hunted was hunting y'all down. Run! Run! Oh my goodness, get out of there, man! It's actually scary. He kept it busy? He just got stabbed in the back. That's not really keeping it- Okay, there it is. <laughs> this guy. Throw some rocks at it. I thought he was just done with that one, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. Sense is coming, bro. We gotta get- We gotta get out of here. We gotta make moves. I don't wanna get jumped by Sense. Like, dude, they didn't even realize this guy was showing up until he was collapsing at the door, bro. They are not. Their guard is low. <laughs> oh, sick. That's what he was doing. He was doing this. Okay. Okay, so is there a weakness of not having a mind? Right. What's the buff of having a mind? Hmm. Could it could use hypnotism on us? That would suck. Like, uh, Edel's clone. I'm not a book nerd. I don't know. Bro, you don't gotta be a biologist to kill someone. I mean, it would help. It would help. I think that's fair. Oh, you actually know the answer? Oh, y'all made it. I'm surprised. Good job. You know this information. A Spiegel. Yo, now we're now we're like a ten v one. Okay. Oh, this is helpful. Her her brother, she said. Ah, uh, okay. So she that's fair. Okay, that's how they made it this far. They had a buff. 
Very situ- they had a situational buff. Yeah, kind of true. Or is she trying to weed it? The- let me th- let me see what she said. Burr. 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 Pretty fair. Yeah, that's pretty fair. No. Bro, he was like, yeah, no. He was like beating us up in the last fight. That was probably the gym thing that we saw. Well, there we go. <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, so we just, we got to dis- distract Freerun a little bit. We don't even got to beat Freerun. Everyone goes, mm. <laughs> Use a little rock magic, just tunnel around it. <laughs> that would be so troll. My replica must have done it. Go move replica. Mm. That's what I was saying, yeah. Alright, well, I tried. Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> yeah, if Freerun thinks of it, that means the replica could think of it. Ouch. Everything it's everything you think it already thought. That's crazy. They're coming for us. They're coming. Is where everyone died. We're like fish in a barrel. That's why we gotta break through it now! We gotta kill him! Okay. We gotta go! Yeah, Freerun, what is your behavioral vulnerability? Illusion magic. Hemail. And then start doing a little strip show, and then somebody else. Ah! Oh no. This is sus. Wait, I actually, what is this? <laughs> I don't, I'm worried about this. What are you doing? Oh, quick draw? She just says I'm gonna shoot you really quick? No, no, blocked it. Go move free run, my goodness. That was actually, <laughs> that was actually pretty nuts. What? Was there a little gap, a little gappy gap? You can maybe like skirt around that spot. I don't know. What what are we talking about here? Her blocking that was nuts. Oh. She stops detecting mana for a moment when casting a spell. Okay. So you could like distract her and then do like a sneaky magic shot. That's my guess. <laughs> so it's like she doesn't see it coming. Like little smoke screen, you know, she can't visually see the magic shots and then you shoot her with that and she can't detect it. What is this like Christmas music playing? Okay, wait, sorry, it's normal. <laughs> it's what well, guys, we're literally they're coming to kill us right now, bro. We don't got time to be throwing fights with each other, bro. Can we lock in? It's fine, we're locking in. This is so peaceful. This music is so peaceful. You seem to be having fun. Fern, 
There, dude, the sense is coming to murder us. Okay, I'll let it slide. I'll, I will calm down. Literally, we cut to a giant gym monster. I don't know what is going on here. Is this what Star Stark? Oh, it's female. Oh, this is free and you seem to be having fun. He's hungover. He's, dude, it's a D&D &D party and one player couldn't attend the session, so the player's just hung over and can't help the entire time. That's crazy. That's crazy. Dude, he's, he's passed out on that rock. Hi, Hemel. Hi, Hemel. Bro's got an entire blueprint. Aw, oh, they're cute. Kanye and Lolling. What are they doing? What move is that? What kind of WWE shit? Okay. Just the two of them? Okay, I was about to say. It's true. I'm a dungeoneerer. Oh, they are 2v1ing. Okay. Would you, they just get in the way? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of true. Because you, you throw in more variables, and then it'll diverge quicker. Most of us would probably die. <laughs> eh, sacrifices are fine. <laughs> Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I just worry that we don't know where Fern is. I'm scared that some, like, there might be a second one in there already. You know what I'm saying? Can you give me another mommy hug for, like, a, for, like, a magic boost? Alright, sorry. Remember when she did that last episode? <laughs> Alright. Hi, Free Rin. So yeah, we're gonna have free run and free run match for a second, and then Fern's gonna snipe. That seems like a pretty pretty reasonable plan. What about? I guess we okay. I was about to say keep the doors open, but like we don't gotta. I guess. Yeah, matchups. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with limiting variables. I am totally fine with that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Because we have a very specific weakness we're targeting, so just making sure we can target it the best. We got one shot that we're up. Oh, 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 we're flying! Oh, we're going up! Yeah, so... <laughs> She's literally just getting caught in the crossfire. Yeah, so they're matching right now. They're matching perfectly like the Ubel fight. Oh my lord, what is going on? What spell is that? Oh, it's Zippy Zappies. Oh my goodness, that's my favorite magical spell. Oh, oh, variable. Oh my lord, that was insane. Dude, look at that! That is crazy. I'll be wary of Fern. Oh, she's talking about the other- Oh, that match gun was crazy! My lord. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're diverged now. They're not matching each other anymore. Go to line, go to line. Scary line. Just eat it. Ow. Could you imagine, bro? That's my magical ability. I eat mana. Why are they fighting in the back again? Okay, sorry. Okay. Quick draw while other friends distracted so she can't use her reaction time. I think that's fair. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they're slow to develop reaction speed. That's kind of a funny thing to think about with elves compared to like a human. Where a human would develop those muscle memories a lot quicker than an elf would. That's super cool. True. Bro, shout out Young Fern. What a... 
She's been around for a long time, bro. It's crazy how much she's like grown up. All right, Fern. All right, Fern. Oh my goodness, why would you cut there? You're so mean to me. Okay, at least we're cutting to a flashback that I'm actually down with. Oh yeah, it's Killua's voice actor. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> it throws me off a bit, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna pretend. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just assume. Okay. Oh wow, that's pretty that's pretty interesting. Now it's the people's Mm. Oh, is this how Zeta got attached? Yeah, to the um to the government research stuff, right? That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Like the Wizards Academy, whatever it's called. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big We're starting a magical arms race, bro. Yeah. Freerin is looking up at her like a dog. <laughs> She's just like, huh? <laughs> Oh, my, my paper, bro. What do you want? Oh, you a little elitist? Oh, you a little elitist? Well, she is an elf. She is an elf. This is why I'm, this is why I'm fine with being racist. Like... Ouch. I mean, we know she doesn't go through with this because she's part of the Academy now, so... Let's see what, what Furin says. Ooh, emotional shot. Alright, bye Furin. Go to elves are crazy like that. They actually do, bro. It's annoying. Well, this is pretty. I want to walk here. Oh, good. Wow, that was crazy. She got a little flashback herself, so Fleming's little head ran by, I think. Oh, yeah, there she is. That's such a free run spell, too. <laughs> oh, that was so well done, that little run by. That was so cute. Bro, I'm down with freaking. Aww. That's so adorable. No, I think that's a great dream. I love that dream. Much better than elitism magic, bro. 
Ja. Flame ain't real for them. I love Flame. That's what it's like to be a human dog. Exactly. <laughs> we ain't got that time. We got the fire lit behind us at all times, bro. They gotta make... Humans gotta make these decisions like every couple of years, bro. Yeah, you gotta freaking constantly make that shit. Exactly, dude. <laughs> exactly. This is why I love humans. I love Flame, my goat. Oh, they're industrial revolutioning. Get ready. Dang, she saw the writing on the wall way back. That's so cool. That's that like crazy elven eternal perspective right there. How long has she been alive at this point, you know? That she can read this far into the future kind of and be like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna beat us in a thousand years. They will be the dominant race here. I totally like it totally makes sense. It's just like to have that perspective, that means she has to have been alive for like a while while. Like even in the flashback, dude. Or a human? Fern. Oh my goodness. And it's gonna be Fern. Oh, that is so sick. It even cut to her right there. Okay, good flashback. I was like, why are we getting this flashback? Good flashback. I totally see the idea there. Don't end the episode. Thank you. I was about to say, you're really going to tease me another week? <laughs> Good move. That is, dude, she shot down the barrel of the cannon right there. Oh my goodness, and then they end the episode. Like, can you not? Did, it, uh, did we win? We won, right? GG? Or are we going to have a twist next episode, bro? I don't really trust that we won that hoe. You know what I'm saying? Like, we haven't seen, like, a dozen... We haven't seen Fern Replica. We haven't seen... I don't know. Well, there was a big group of them walking around, so I don't know. But we haven't seen Fern Replica. I don't think we've seen Denkin Replica. But surely we would have noticed... I mean, I'm still worried, dude, that, like, Fern's in the room with them. Am I schizophrenic? I feel like a little... You know what I mean? Like... Is this, is this Replica Fern in the room with you right now? Like, it's one of those situations. Like, where is Replica Fern? I feel like that's a, like, that's a, it's like a Chekhov's gun situation, bro. Unless we just kill the, the thingy before Replica Fern can be a problem. I'm just worried. I'm just a little worried. If anything, that was kind of easy. It was a good strategy, though. It was a good strategy, right? Just match each other and then take advantage of a little gap in, in Freerun's armor and then have Freerun snipe it. I mean, that's a that's a pretty perfect strategy, you know? I'm totally fine with that. All right, it's not brute force trying to just overwhelm with numbers. It's very, it's very pinpointed, which makes it a lot cleaner. A cleaner of a cut. Let's end this. Incredible. It's up to you. This opening won't do. The height of magic. Yeah, I, I don't know what's I don't know what's being effed about there. I'm gonna be honest. It just dude, these these previews don't even like tell you anything, bro. <laughs> I feel like they really don't say much. Uh they really hit me with the craziest and dude, their animation here was nuts. The, yeah, I, the best part of this by far for me was when they hit this like fire red crimson magic here when they burned this Volzonbel, bro. Shout out Volzonbel. The lighting change went so hard. <laughs> they went boink, 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 boink. <laughs> but yeah, the, the lighting from this like warm to this like like volcanic lighting. Dude, and like look at the, it, it's like magma, dude. It's not like a clean fire or anything. It's like chunky. They got chunky fire, dude. 
Oh, and that red lighting goes so hard. My goodness. And then this part, this was the best shot, dude. Literally, dude, I need to see this in like an AMV of the, you know what I'm saying? What are those like AMVs that like connect like a bunch of freaking shows and it's like, you know, best 2024 anime ultra AMV, that kind of stuff. Bro, give me this shot where it's the walking and then it match cuts to the other free rim, bro. That went so unreasonably hard. Oh, they mirrored it too to make it more obvious with the hair. The hair got mirrored. I mean, it makes sense because that's that's the. Um, I think that you know that's just how mirrors kind of work. Like if you're looking at somebody, right? So, but yeah, like that. Oh my goodness. I that was the that was so clean. Oh, and look at the the heat wave like warbling. Like right when something's super hot, how like the air kind of twists or like does that weird effect around it that makes it like a little unclear, a little like. Not quite blurry, but just like, like, like silly mirror. It's like a funny mirror, like a clown mirror, bro. The world becomes clown mirror when it's hot. It's literally going on here. It's like blurry and like, oh, it, it clarifies, but especially right at the start, right? It's blurry and it's like all kind of warbly, for lack of a better term. Yeah, that's an official terminology right there. Warbly. Oh man, that's so clean, dude. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Pink, dude. Look at these like paintbrush strokes. They're actually like st like paintbrush strokes right here. This black, that is so pretty. Oh my goodness! And dude, do you see how she immediately she does like a swipe and then she starts like she puts in the staff in an upright position, starts channeling something. See how she flips it around and then she's like, bam! That staff work is crazy. Can you hear that car? Oh my goodness. Dude, staff work is crazy. I did not know that Freer knew how to like work a staff that that well. Was she teleport? What was that? Wait, what was this move? She has she has turned into light. I don't remember that spell. No one knows better than I do how frightening I can be. That's a good line. And then this is the shot that she dodges and then Fern snipes down the barrel of, right? So it cuts away. Oh, man, I'm so... Dude, it's crazy, man. They always hit you with the craziest animation and then got a cut away. That's like every single anime I've ever watched, bro. It's You know what I mean? Where they just got it, bro. They can't help but give us a flashback to give meaning to what's about to happen. And I love it. Like, it works. But it's like, dude... Like, dude, my action scene, bro. <laughs> my action scene. <laughs> Where I'm just literally like, I swear, if they, you know, it literally, dude, up to the end of the episode, like, right at the end, I'm not even thinking, like, about the action scene. I'm just thinking about, don't let this episode end, please. I need to see the conclusion of this. It's crazy. It's crazy how that works. I feel like that's that's very normal, I think, for most anime, though. So it's not really, like, a critique as much. I think that's pretty, pretty typical. This shot went so hard, too, bro. Fern jogging around as this, like... It, dude, it, it seems kind of eldritch to me. The way it's, like... These light beams are like going all around. It almost feels like tentacles or something, right? And she's just caught in the crossfire of this like insanity. Like literally like a storm, bro. She's brought a plasmic thunderstorm into this room. I mean, rocks are levitating. New gravitational forces. They each are doing different, like slightly different staff positions. That went so hard. Oh my goodness. Even look at that where she points it and this light is just, she's like, we're seeing her silhouette so clearly here. Man, the silhouette work even looks pretty cool because she's a clone, so she has that very, like, black and white look to her. Or just, like, very, like, one note, very monochrome. So it being a silhouette, like, if you kind of blur your eyes, I mean, that could be either free or in. You know what I mean? Ooh, her little jump there. You see her little jump? Bink! She jumped off the roof. She hopping around. You see? And, dude, her shadow? I think that's what, that's one of my favorite things I think they did this scene, bro. Shots like this, where the light broadcasts her shadow. Because it, it tells us how close she is to the wall. It gives us information that really... I mean, that's intuitive for a human. Like, we see a shadow. We understand what's going on really well here, right? How close the light source is to the person. How close the person is to their shadow. Tells us the distance between them. That's all intuitive to the human brain, at that, like, once you've lived long enough. So it, that works so well. And this, this, that rock sliding, because it's like we're matched, right? And that's, that's how I kept picturing this scene. It's like, dude, a clone fight... 
until a variable shows up, you're going to be equals, right? And so to have this vari variable like, oh, a rock's going to fall. Like imagine, dude, if it didn't fall perfectly, if it was only going to fall on one of them, then that unbalances the playing field and completely changes the formula of the of the fight, right? Where one person is disadvantaged uniquely. Here, though, they, they got equally disadvantaged, which made for a really cool shot, which then continued this to the coolest scene I've ever seen. Oh, my Lord. And she's calling. She's, like, reading herself, bro. It's so good. But, yeah, cutting to this other part um, to give us, a bu you know, Flame information, but most specifically leading up to the point of... Which I did really like this Flame information, right? Um, pretty much just human supremacy. Um, we take those for sure, right? The whole, like, dude, her dream to spread magic around. Oh, my goodness. It's pretty... Ge it's honestly pretty genius. Um... I think to like, and probably pretty realistic to, if you want to spread something, make it a part of the war machine. You know what I mean? Like low key, bro. That's actually smart, right? If you want to make sure that humans will research magic, don't be like, Hey, let me teach you how to conjure flowers. Instead be like, Hey, teach, let me teach you how to conjure death. Then people will like that because people use death more than flowers because humans are crazy like that and like to kill things and get what they want. So yeah, if you really want magic to spread, don't try to show them the cute flower fields that is like the core of why you care about magic. Show them the somewhat, the, the very violent and dangerous applications. The useful, for lack of a better term, bro. Or, no, a great term, bro. The useful slash utility of magic, as opposed to like the heart of it. Yeah, that's good genius. That's how you spread things for sure, bro. Unless it can make you money or like give you things or help you protect things, bro people will not use it nearly as much, right? Like on a, on broad strokes, on broad strokes. Individuals, yeah, like if I'm a farmer, bro, I don't care about like, I don't want to learn explode your heart magic. I want to learn flower magic because I'm a freaking nerd and a farmer, bro. But that's not how you get it to spread across a freaking civilization, right? Young Flame was adorable. I didn't realize that their mentorship was, she was so young in the mentorship. It's really a parallel of Freer and Infern then. Flame and Zede to Freerun and Fern. Though Freerun cares a lot more about Fern than... I think, like, Zede actually cared about Flame, and she, but she wasn't really readily ready to admit that, right? Which is funny. We even got a scene of, like, if anything, this was Zede having to, like, mourn um, Flame a little bit, right? Where it's like, she was like, nah, denied your final request, El Bozo. And then Freerun hit her with an unexpected little heart jab about it being about her dream, and she was like, fine, like, let's walk, let me actually, like, take a moment here, so she took a moment to reminisce, took a moment to walk it out, right, um, and then eventually, I think, kind of changed her mind according to that, right, to actually, like, follow the dream, and so we did have a moment here where she went from denying the dream of her mentor, or, you know, not accepting, or, like, not really, like, uh, accepting is not quite the word, right word, but, um, Deal, maybe like perhaps even dealing with her death accordingly, right? Where she just kind of denied it at fr at face value instead of like actually taking the time with it. But then Freerun helped her to take the time with it by bringing that like that message across. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if anything, that's a really I would be very curious like the parallel to I mean, kind of what happens here, bro. I'm scared that Fer Fern's gonna die, bro. Honestly, because well, I mean, she will eventually. Like, that's, the, that's how I took this. I mean, it's free run, but it, it parallels the ED for me. That's what I'm trying to lead to here. It parallels the ED because free run is laying by a tomb. And then we have Fern's ribbon, Fern as a kid. This looks like a coffin, right? I mean, we could go on and on, right? Um, and so there's kind of a point there of like, I always took the ED as Fern's going to die eventually because that's the case. Free run is going to outlive Fern unless free run dies of unnatural causes beforehand. That's just how it goes. So I kind of thought that the ED would be referring to that. Um, but if anything, we got a shot. We got a scene here that could be used as a parallel to Freerin losing Fern um, at some point, right? Where while Zere, Zere, the previous elf with a mentor, um, magical, you know, mage, all that type of stuff, um, you know, she she took a moment. She like had that kind of um, cold exterior a bit with the death but then it actually she had to warm up to a little bit like how's freerun gonna respond right i think freerun would be a lot more emotional at face value than zede was 
right? Because Freerin's like learned so much off of email and connecting with people and, and such and such, right? She's grown so much in that regard. If anything, she's like learning how to love and learning how to mourn, you know? I think that makes a lot of sense. I think even the, the name of the series can be translated to something like that, right? I forget exactly. But um, point there being that we get to see a similar thing with Zeta here that I think would be a very interesting parallel to how Freerin has to deal with it eventually. I say eventually in the hopes that it's not at all remotely soon. But like, because no way they kill an actual character, right? They don't really do that. And you're like, hey, he mills dead. And I'm like, okay, I'll let it slide. Good point. No, but like, I feel like they haven't like ever really emotionally like tried to kill me before. I'm trying to think, does this show have the balls to kill Fern? You know what I mean? Like, bro, ima imagine, bro. I just feel like it's, it's not that type of show, but I might be wrong. Because think about it, bro. Imagine this. Fern dies next episode. And then Freerun has to deal with that. And then Stark has to deal with that. That would be so in incredibly sad. Are you kidding me? Like, no way they're actually like that, right? Um, no, we got to get to heaven, dog. No, I mean, that's the thing. Like, even if Fern dies, the thing for me in death, bro, death is sad to me because there's, I'm not confident in a heaven, right? Um, so, but if, like, if heaven is literally a place on earth, which to some degree it is in the free run world, that, um, a role or a role, whatever, how you ever pronounce it, is like a location that they're trying to get to to see Stark. Assuming that that lives up to the expectations I have of it, then I don't really mind death that much. Unless, I guess, I, my, my, my criteria, my, my uh, qualifier there would be, unless elves don't go to heaven, because we all know that elves immediately go into hell because they're elves, right? And so, okay. Um, no, but like, what if they have like a different heaven, right? What if they have a different afterlife system than humans do? Like Lord of the Ring type B? So in that way, you could actually, like if a human dies and then you die as an elf, then you're permanently separated, right? That would be incredibly sad. So that would bring back some of that like pain of, of, of loss. Um, which is not to say that like, oh, heaven exists, therefore you can't feel sad. Like obviously you can, and obviously there's still loss there and mourning to be had, but it like, it, it like rationally, it changes completely for me uh, as soon as there is like an actual heaven you can visit to or like a, a guaranteed reunion. Because if, dude, if I'm guaranteed to reunion with, with the people I lose, bro, it's like, bro, it's not buy forever. It's I, I'll see you later. You know what I'm saying? Like it goes from, it goes from losing a friendship into like literally the friendship's still there and you're just like going on vacation for a bit, right? That's, that's the, really the difference for me. Um... And so in that way, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's complicated. It's, it's it, it, obviously loss and mourning is so much more complicated than like, oh, you're religious. You're not allowed to mourn. That's stupid. That's obviously stupid. Um, but it really does make the dynamic so much different, which makes me very like, I don't know. We haven't even seen a role yet though. So who knows if heaven will at all live up to it. We're kind of playing with limited information there. But yeah, there's, well, and, the, and I guess my, my point there was like, if they do kill Fern before we make it to heaven, we could see Fern in heaven. That was, that's what I was leading to there. Um, and the only reason I think they might kill Fern before then, which I don't really even think they will. I don't think the show's tone is there. I don't think the show's tone um, and like stakes are high enough to kill characters like that. I could be absolutely wrong, in which case, bet, I'm down. Like, I'd be super down with that. I think that'd be great. Because um, I love pain and suffering, apparently. But yeah, like, that would be like, and the only reason I think that is because this ED, right? Where it's like, now I'm like thinking like, bro, I don't know, I guess I'm playing with the hypothetical that they kill her before, before, I, I'm not out of old age, because this very well could be old age as well. In which case, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll see you in heaven, like, cool, your, your body just got like cancer and died, like, GG. That's a lot less traumatic than you got murdered in this king's tomb surrounded by a bunch of rocks instead of Stark and your, like, seven children that y'all sh should have had. You know what I mean? Because, yes, Fr Fern and Stark are going to have kids. Bet. Thoughts? <laughs> I just... I almost said, like, Fern, are you infertile? I really shouldn't have thought it, but, like, I had to let y'all know that I thought that for a second there. All right, well, that was a fun tangent about um Fern's potential death. What else what happened this episode? I mean, it was a battle episode, which I love. Well, it wasn't entirely a battle episode. Um, yeah, the love of the dungeoneering. The love of the dungeoneering. 
Um, oh man, that that fight scene went so incredibly hard. I actually am like so incredibly hard for that fight scene, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I did quite like the flom dude flom flomis characterization each time, bro. Keeps getting better and better. I feel like, like. It's crazy. I feel like Hemel right away, I feel like I knew, like, I, like, was understandable pretty well, you know? Where it's like, oh, he's just the goat, and he's my goat. Flame, I feel like, keeps getting a little, a little more depth each time, bro. I quite like Flame. Flame is kind of my goat. I wish she was still alive. Can we see her in heaven? Can we actually make it to freaking heaven? Uh, Imagine having to get a freaking license, a freaking mage's exam, first examinee license to, to walk into a, a location. Can I just walk in there and get killed? Why am I not allowed in? Let me into active war zones, please. Thank you. I'm literally a mage. <laughs> it's just tough, bro. Yeah. Um, so we gotta break through. I guess I guess the only other thing that's like important to me Um would be when the information or when Oh yeah, well I've I've actually a second thing to say, but like when the other clones are gonna show up. <clears throat> right? Um, cause we did get a lot of shots of them, like, walking this direction. The thing, though, is, bro, they're walking as individuals. If I'm a group of seven people, or, like, eight people, and Freerin and Ferd are 1v2-ing Freerin in there, and, like, oh, no, it's the eight of us versus Mommy. What's her name? I don't remember. I'm gonna just call her Mommy, I think. I think that's probably fine. Um, I don't think I have her name written down. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. It's fine, right? Oh, no. She's gonna hug me. Like, bro, we're just gonna stab her a bunch. Like, she's dead, bro. It's an 8v1. I, I, I get it with Freerin. I get being afraid of Freerin, because as soon as you, like, bring in a bunch of... Bring in a bunch of variables, then it's gonna be really tough to beat her, right? Or, or like, it's gonna be risky, because there's, like, who knows what's gonna, what she's gonna do. She could cast a crazy spell and catch someone off guard and kill him. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I'll accept that. But, bro. Oh, no. Kane is here. She's gonna kill- you know what I mean, bro? There's eight of us. Literally just shoot her a bunch of times and she's dead, bro. Or like, oh no, it's Lolling. You know what I'm saying? Fern I'm scared of. Fern I think could actually walk in and, and murder people. I'm scared of Replica Fern. I'm just gonna say that over and over and over. I'm scared of Replica Fern. 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 Um, the, I guess the- the pro one of the last things I wanted to bring up, though. Um, would be... Freaking Kane and Lolene, bro. They really had this information, like, about the dungeon, and we're only hearing about it now. My oldest brother was in the advance party that the Continental Mage Association sent into the Tomb of the Ruined King. Bro! She literally just said, like, y'all left before I could tell you. Is that wait, is that really what she said? Don't make me fact check this, Lolene. I keep calling her Lolene. I don't think it's Lolene. I think it's Lolene. Hm. I'm gonna make up things and make up letters to put in your name. So you had information, no wonder you made it this far. It's true. I 100% agree. And then he's like, you should have told us at the start. And then she's like, um, what'd she say? What was your reply to this? I didn't feel like we could have. Yeah, so like A, it was risky because you kind of suck Omega lol. Freer and Infern left, which are like the people we actually would have wanted to talk to. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm fact checking this whole <laughs> 23. How many episodes ago was this? Um, it might have been 22. Oh my goodness, it's 20, 22. I don't, I'd have to open up. It'd be annoying for me to open it up separately. Oh no, no, wait, 22 was the um, no, it's 23. It should be 23 because 22 was the um, the other one. Yeah, 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 it's 22. It's 22. So yeah, we're literally like chilling. We're learning about the stuff. Did for it? So right now, both of them have the information. And, uh, wait, what were they talking about? Were they talking about, like, should we spread the information? Because, yeah, dude, look, 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 look at this arrangement. They're, they're planning it out right now. Yumcha, okay, this is Yumcha the real issue, actually. I'll tell you the real issue, bro. During the freaking downtime session, episode 22, they were literally hanging out. They were having a girl's night, and they knew that it was the king's tomb. Remember they got the scroll? So why didn't they tell Freer and Fern then? Boom. It's a misplay. They had to think about it, bro. They didn't want to tell Freer and Fern until they actually got to the door. No, give some information beforehand. I guess maybe she wanted to like, be like, like figure out exactly what the, um, what the mission was because if the mission was like first to the bottom wins, then yeah, I'm not telling anyone. 
you know. Um, but I guess right now they're trying to figure it out. They're like, yeah, should we tell them? They're planning it out. And then Fury and Inferno are right, right at the door. Do they just walk in, like, right next scene? Let's see. Ubel's like, give me your magic. I want to empathize with you. Give me your magic. <laughs> I'll give you a little... Okay. Whoa, that was wrong with me. Okay, Denkins yapping, Denkins yapping. I'm waiting for Freedom and Friend to walk in. I'm trying to I'm trying to get a gauge of how much time passed for Kane and Lion. Right. I'm just gonna mute this. I'm just gonna hit it with a little mute. This group should split up and he's like, Whoa, we should work together. Can Free and Free and Friend walk in? So yeah. We get this we're not obligated to our companion survival isn't a condition for passing the test. We aren't obligated to help each other, which it does inform Lauren and Kane. Because I, su I assume they're talking about whether they should spread the information or not. Yeah. And so he says that stuff. Um, which perhaps is like where Kane and Lauren got the idea for to like keep it to themselves. And they look at each other and they're like, well, dang, what should we do? Ubel is just drooling over there. This group of buffoons walks in. I'm glad that they all three kind of got, were kind of washed. This group of three walks in. I'm literally just watching this to try to figure out how much I should get mad at Kana and Lion for sucking. I'm literally just trying to target them right there. Wait, did Fern and Fern, where's Fern and Fern? Did they already walk in? Did I miss the scene of them walking in? No, Sense is still outside, so no. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, because Connie and Lion are just watching this, bro. They're just watching, they're just watching it slip out of their hands right now. They're literally just watching. It's like, oh, we wanted to work with them. We have the information. They're leaving. Oh, oh, okay, bet. Even, se dude, Sense accompanies them? I'm like, hey, can I tag along? Like, bro, I'm a leech. Are, uh, get me in there, bro. Yeah. Freaking Kane and Lion, bro. <laughs> what bozos. I'm gonna call them bozos. I think they've failed my bozo test. It is what it is. They literally just stand there with the information. Dude, it's actually, that's kind of a real feeling, though. I'm not gonna say it's unrealistic. I'm just gonna say it's bozo. My meaning here. Bro, there's so many times that's like, like, it's like, it's like somebody, dude, it's like a waiter has your food and you know it's their food and they walk past your table and then they start confusedly looking around trying to figure out whose, whose table it is. And you're like, you're like, no, 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 that's my food, my food, my food. And then it's just like, oh, oh no, oh no. Oh, you know what I mean? What's that feeling of like, I wish I could tell him, but now it's awkward. That's literally what stopped them from helping or from telling him, I bet. Where it's like, dude, they're just standing over there being like, oh no, I wanted to work with Freeran and Fern. Oh no, they're going in with sense. They're so OP and I have information, but like, oh, they're already gone. Oh, it's too late. Is it too late? Yeah, it's too late. I can't get over there. I can't help. It's too late. It's too late. That's literally what they're doing over there, bro. It's like, come on, guys. This is life and death, bro. This is the mage exam. Don't let your social anxiety get in the way, man. You got to get in there and talk to them, hoes, bro. And you had time to think about this. You had like a, you had a day of downtime to know we were going to the king's tomb. We should have prepped this hoe out. Talk with Freeman and Fern, bro. Man, they just fumbled that a little bit. They just fumbled that a little bit. Just so they could walk in later and be like, yeah, we got the information. It's like, bro, well, now it's not helpful. Now it's not helpful. Okay? All that did was make sure y'all got through. The. That's what I'm saying, bro. The. Anything else going on in this episode? Great episode. Great animation. Loved the match cuts. Loved the transitions. Loved the different magics. Loved the lighting. Really good stuff. Really dynamic. We went from purples to like warms, to reds, to all sorts of things. Purple's Fern's color, shout out my girl Fern. Good flashback, good flashback. At first I was actually a little upset. I was like, bro, come on now. Don't give me a flashback in the middle of my fight scene. But they did tie it to the fight scene in a way that I that I was okay with about like how age of humans, shout out my boy humans, I love humans, love humans. Uh, and a free reign, you're gonna die by a freaking the demon king or a human mage. It's true. Good foreshadowing for Fern. Um, 
the good Flame information I quite liked as well. A little bit of a future future parallel for like and how an elf mourns their student, right? Which is going to be very important for Freerin eventually in the story. Um, see how happy she is when she twirls out of the way here. She is wit. She smirks so big there, bro. She's having a freaking chill time, bro. <laughs> She's literally like, how I look at the dollar store Zoltrak. That's literally what she's thinking right here. Dollar store magic. Look at this little smirk, bro. She's having way too much fun. She's like, I, you have fun with the freaking fern blast, bro. You think I'm getting caught in the in the tail end of this? No thanks, I'm out this hoe. Blink. Good impact frames too, look at that. I love their, their impact frames in this show are so good. They have really, really good impact frames, bro. Surely Freerin's dead. Oh, she's a happy elf. Fern, again. Bam, 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 bam. Come on, keep shooting. Yeah, so, um, that was all pretty effective. Pretty good, I think. Um, bet. That's basically where I'm at. Bet. Bet, bet, bet. Hopefully we get more fight scenes, bro. I want more fight scenes with the hoes outside fighting off a bunch of the other people. I want to see Replica Fern. That's all I got. That's all I'm, that's, that's all that's left on my checklist. But yeah, that, I think, is all I got for this one. Episode 25 of A Fern Beyond the Jersey. Not of the next episode. 20, a 6. Of course, of course, of course. If you made it this far into the video, I would assume that you liked it. Maybe you hate watched. That's okay. If you did like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you are new, blah, blah, blah. Comment down below if you have anything to say or join the Discord and talk to me or other Furian fans there. Until then, until the next episode, episode 26, that's like I will be seeing you then.